Today I'm going to be taking a look at the newest release from Aster and Banks. It is their kind of update to the Fortitude line. They refined it in a lot of ways, so let's take a look at what's different. So we have a diameter of 38.5, lug to lug of 45.5, height of 10.7, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have the Miyota 9039 beating away in here. Uh, what's nice is we don't have a ghost date position, there's just a single date for the time setting. We also have a flat sapphire crystal here with an under AR coating, 200 meters of state of water resistance with a screw down crown. Uh, the watch is also ISO rated for the kind of 4,800 amperes, I believe is the measurement of uh, magnetic resistance. I don't know if it's actually rated, but it just it does follow the rating. And Outside of that, this watch retails for 625 kind of in the standard variation, and then 650 is the most expensive version for, I believe, the Mother of Pearl. And the one thing I forgot to mention for all the indices in the hands, we do have BGW9 Loom. So looking at the dial here, we do have a pretty simple layout, and it keeps the same Aster and Banks uh, DNA about it. We have what I'll just call these missile markers. They're kind of rectangular at the base, and then a little bit more circular towards the tips. Uh, double marker at 12 and single marker everywhere else for all the hours. There's just a regular seconds track on the outside here done in black. Uh, the hands and the edges of the indices are all done in this gunmetal coloring, which I think does provide a nice contrast against this silver gold sandy dial. There's a somewhat sector feel here because we do have the gentle, I guess, indent into the dial uh, just outside of the hour markers. The text is kept very minimal here. We just have Aster and Banks at the top here, Fortitude, which is the model number or model uh, name done in red. And then 20 atmospheres automatic kind of at the very bottom there kind of a nice triangular symmetry along all the text and i like how it looks i guess the main detail of the dial that i like outside of just how clean it is is the double faceted hour and minute hands they do catch the light nicely uh, it gives it a little bit more interest than a regular just flat faceted hand and i just think it looks cool one last thing to note about the dial, it the color of it is very interesting. I think they call it sand on the website, but to me it appears a little bit more golden at times. Uh, as you kind of tilt it off axis and go into like darker lightings, it goes very much more golden and then a little bit more sandy and bright at others. So it has a lot of depth of color to the dial, which I wasn't really expecting, but it's pretty nice to see. Taking a closer look at the Aster and Banks, we do have this metallic sheen, metallic graining to the dial, kind of darker and lighter spots of the base color itself. It is done very finely, very nicely overall. Looking at the markers themselves, they are coated very nicely in whatever coatings process this is. Uh, and they do have a lot of depth to them. There's a lot of roundness to the round parts. There's a lot of kind of just depth to the actual marker itself. And it is interesting because the loom infill goes up just before the edge of the marker so the marker kind of stands out a little bit higher which i usually prefer it the other way around but it does give a little bit of extra depth to the watch so looking at the hands here as you can see they are pretty much coated in the exact same signature as the rest of the dial but there is a slight scratch on the hour hand there i'm sure it's just a qc issue it's not something i've ever noticed while wearing the watch but it is there very similarly, there is kind of like a tiny little dent or notch at the very end of the hour hand. I believe that's just in the coating rather than the hand itself, but again, it is there. Looking at the rest of the minute hand and the seconds hand as well, there aren't any similar issues, which are nice to see. Overall, there is a somewhat dirtiness to the color of the lumen fill that isn't the same as the markers themselves. Right here, you can tell the easiest. The Minute hand is kind of more white, the hour marker is a little bit more green, and for some reason the seconds hand itself is almost blackish, grayish. So I don't know if that's from the coating process or the amount of loom that's applied onto the hands and markers, but either way, there is that slight variation. The rest of the dial is done very cleanly, the text is done very nicely. It'd be nice maybe to see just a tiny bit amount more of depth to the actual uh, application of the written text, but as it stands, it's not too bad and thankfully, the Simply Done dial is fairly well done. And before I completely take a look at the Aster and Banks on the right here, I did want to just show you the dial of the Aster and Banks on the left here because he was kind enough to send me along the Mother of Pearl version. And I think the Mother of Pearl has a really, really beautiful dial to it. Um, the Mother of Pearl, of course, it always depends on what slab you have, but I think it has a nice living texture. As you can see, there's colors of white in there. There's gentle blue. There's a little bit of pink at the top here. So it's a really living texture and it almost appears cloudy to me. Uh, 
So it is a really nice color tone overall, and I think the heat blued hands, the kind of blue uh, done for the text, done for the outside markers and the minutes track, all plays really well with the tones on this watch. This probably would be a variation I would keep. However, the markers, although they use BGW9, still lean a little bit too yellow for my liking. Uh, but overall, it still does look fantastic. All the balloon tones work really well. The heat blued hands pop out amazingly and have a really nice color depth. And to have some heat blued hands at this price point is pretty ridiculous. And apparently the fact that the markers are heat blued as well, it just all ties in together really nicely. And another cool thing about the Mother of Pearl, as you can see here at like off angles, it goes more for like a, a full kind of cream color along the whole dial. And then as you move it, the certain texture and colors pop out more. So it is really a fun dial to work with. So now moving on to the case of the Aster and Banks. And this I really, really like because the old case was fine. It fit well, it looked cool, but this one has just been refined a little bit more in every way. As you can see, we still do have the flat bezel here with the vertical brushing on the top of it, but the kind of gentle bulbousness to the sides of the bezel with high polish on there. We do have a very fine vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs, which are seem a little bit more uh, condensed than the brushing on the bezel does. And then we do have the high polish relief all along the side of the case here, which is really nice. It kind of almost deepens towards the middle of the case, which is a nice touch and just looks really cool. The side of the case, it's been, I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe it's been thickened slightly, um, even though the overall dimension is a little bit thinner. And we do have a vertical brushing here. For me, it looks like the case back is a little bit thinner. The mid case is a little bit thicker. It does conform just about perfectly to the wrist. The lugs come down and meet almost just about at the case back. So it doesn't really rise up off the wrist the same way uh, the normal Fortitude did and still does because I believe you can still order that watch. And of course, drill lug holes here, which is always nice to see. And Aster and Banks kind of bulbous crown there with a really nice knurling, which makes it easy to grip. Uh, unwinds nicely, winds nicely, and then screws back in pretty easily as well. So no problems there. Going back onto the bracelet, we do still have this classic Aster and Banks Y type link. It goes from a 20 all the way down to a 16. So a pretty dramatic taper. And I think it does work well. It has an interesting look on wrist and the links are fairly small and short. So since there's a lot you can remove and you do have a lot of micro just in the clasps, you can find a pretty comfortable fit. The bracelet itself is all vertically brushed everywhere. There is no high polished relief parts until you get to the clasp where you do have some high polish on the sides of the clasp. Uh, it is nice to see that the Aster and Banks kind of upgraded the clasps in comparison to the old Fortitude model. Uh, what I really didn't like before is that you just kind of had a friction fit class, whereas now here you do have a push button deployment. So it's nice, it's a little easier functionality wise, and it feels really good for operation purposes. And then you do have a flip lock clasped here too with the Astro and Bank signed in uh, on the top there. And then just really quickly, a pretty plain case back, just kind of states what your serial number is, the kind of uh, the fact that this is the Fortitude model and some other general info on the outside of there. Moving on to how this watch wears earlier, I was wearing my Corono here. And here we have the Fortitude on my six and a half inch wrist. And I think you can tell it wears pretty well. Uh, it does have a pretty short lug to lug length. It is a smaller diameter watch overall. You do have a female end link. So all of these just kind of combine to the wear just well on the wrist. And now because they did slim down the case, it doesn't really rise up at all. And it sits very slimly. From the top view, you can see that there is a pretty dramatic taper in the bracelet, but it's nice and gradual. So overall, I think it does look proportional. It looks nice. It almost adds a subtle elegance to the watch itself. And that's nice because it can be a very sporty watch, but because it's simple, because it's clean, it can also be dressed up if you'd like to. So looking at the watch from the side here, as you can see, it doesn't really lift off the wrist at all. It conforms pretty well. It sits on the wrist nicely. It doesn't really dig in any way, whether that be the crown or the case bottom. So it is a really comfortable watch to wear. Moving on to some other straps, we have this nice sandy uh, canvas strap from Archer Straps off Amazon. I think it pairs well with the watch. Again, makes it a little bit more rugged. And then just one thing to note, it is cool because Aster and Banks did go through the trouble of completely finishing the watch case. Uh, the inside of the lugs, the kind of area right here where the bracelet would normally cover are all brushed rather than just left polished. So when it's on a strap, it doesn't really pop out too much and kind of keeps the overall finished theme of the watch. But again, looking on the inside, something that is different is we no longer have the two sets of lugs, just one normal lug set, which I'm fine with, it still works. 
And there we go, pairs really nicely, makes the watch a lot more casual. Uh, and I think the tones play fairly well together. So that is the Archer strap. And here we have this gray strap from Strap Bandit. It's a little bit casual, has a cool subtle texture to it. And thankfully, because the color of this dial is almost pretty neutral, you can mix almost any color with it. Here we have it on wrist, not too shabby. And yeah, that's the Strap Bandit strap. Next, we have this nice green pajama strap from uh, Blue Shark Straps. It, I think, pairs pretty well. The green and tan colors work well. And the center line that's in white kind of just falls in line with the markers here. Thankfully, because the watch is so thin, adding this one-piece strap really doesn't do much to the height at all. It still wears super comfortably on wrist. And again, makes it pretty casual, looks good, and thankfully you can have a lot of fun with NATOs on this watch. And then next, I really love this combo. This is uh, the Vario Distressed Italian Leather uh, in this brown color. I think it just works perfectly with the tones on the watch. Uh, it dresses it up slightly, but it's still a very casual grain of leather, so it doesn't look like a dress watch by any means. And yeah, let's get it on wrist. Looks pretty good, gives it almost a rugged feel even though it is leather. And thankfully these straps break in pretty immediately, so don't even have to worry about that. Last but never least, the Archer Silicone. Uh, doesn't look too bad on this watch. There we have it on wrist, nice fun combo, looks great. Uh, I think this watch pairs really well with silicone straps because it does have that somewhat sporty vibe to it. You can put Barton Elite silicones on this, no problem. So I think it looks great and nice kind of summer combo. Looking at the loom here, as is pretty classic with BGW9, it's a pretty good signature. You can read everything pretty nicely. There's a lot of delineation. You have all the markers as well as all the hands loomed. So you can pretty easily tell the time in the dark with this. It does last a pretty good amount of time. It is pretty well applied. Uh, so not too many complaints. I don't know if it shows up too good on the camera, but the second hand is pretty dim compared to the rest of the dial, but it is a thinner hand. Relooming comparing to the Timex, as you can see, I mean, they have a pretty similar signature. They're both just about as bright as each other. I can read them in person just as easily. Of course, Timex is gonna last longer because in theory, Indiglo is just a better thing, <laughs> but the Astrum Bix is not too badly applied. It is still very legible, and I think they did a pretty good job with it. So pros and cons of this watch, and one of the bigger pros for me is just kind of the size of it and I guess the redesigns to the case. It's just nice to have a watch that's under 40 millimeters. It fits well, it looks nice. It's not too big to where it looks too sporty. It's not too small to where it looks too dressy. It's in a nice medium happy place. Uh, and it's just nice that they did end up taking out the soft iron cage situation. They made the case a little bit thinner. They made the case a little bit more ergonomic and it just sits a lot better than the previous version did and I really appreciate them kind of taking the feedback and launching this updated model. Another area where they improved was the bracelet. It is one of those things where the previous version was a friction fit clasp, whereas the new one was much more uh, just refined. It had the push button deployant. It didn't hurt to operate as the other one did because sometimes the way it dug into the hand wasn't comfortable. And it's just a little bit of an ease of life improvement. Another thing I really like about this watch and kind of this series in general is I think it is good value for money. Uh, my main qualm with the previous version was, although it's a very nice watch, it was a little unrefined. And I think this watch in particular fixes a lot of the main problems that I had. The K shape is a lot better. The C3 is swapped out for better BGW9 loom that doesn't look as green. And it just looks better, I think. It's nice because they do offer a lot of color options, a lot of variety. So you can go with something very safe like a white dial. You can do something very interesting like a mint dial. So it has pretty much options for every type of collector. If you want this to be your only watch and your everyday watch, there's an option for you. If you want just to be another additional fun uh, option in your collection, you can go with one of the funner colors and it's nice to have that variety. The last pro with this watch is mainly the dial. I think it's really well done it's well finished the depth of the color again surprised me a lot uh, it just looks really nice in person i'm not much for golden tones personally but this one accomplishes that really well it has unique color depth that goes from a gentle silver to really gold depending on the angle and it's just a well-finished watch, all things considered. Moving on to the cons, and it, a kind of minor one is the fact that the loom is still somewhat mismatched. Again, on the seconds hand, I don't know if it's because it's just such a small strip of loom, but it looks a little dirtier, a little grayish, 
And uh, again, for some reason, even though it is BGW9, it's still leaning a little bit uh, creamish instead of pure white. I don't know if it's just the batch that he's getting because I have seen wider loom other places or it's just my vision for this watch. It just doesn't look right. And that just might be my eyeballs, who knows? But it's maybe something they can improve on by using a different loom manufacturer, I don't know. Uh, it's just what I experienced with it. I genuinely don't really have many cons for this watch. Uh, the only other slight, I guess, suggestion I can have for it is the fact that I think the handset doesn't perfectly match the dial design. You have a marker that is squared and rounded depending on which side you're looking at, but then the uh, handset is a little bit more triangular and pyramidal. With me, had they have gone for something that was a little bit more rounded, like kind of uh, like lollipop-esque or something that was more square, it would have just fit the design better, but also it hinders legibility a little bit because with a rounded or squared hand, you can't quite tell the um, kind of time as, as well, even though that's the main function of the watch. But even then, I think this isn't, and this is the case with most watches, it's not really meant to tell the time, or that's not its initial or most intended use. It's just a cool accessory to put on the wrist and it's a fun work of art. So uh, if they maybe updated the handset slightly, I think it would feel a little bit more uh, at home in its design language, but again, very, very small point. I don't think it looks bad as it is. So final thoughts on this watch, and I did really like it. I wasn't the hugest fan of the first version just because it was fun, it was a cool color, but there were certain things that bothered me, like a little bit of the thickness of the case and the loom, definitely. These were both addressed in this model and now it wears better than ever, it looks better than ever in my opinion. Uh, so it really is just upgraded in every way in my eyes. You still have a lot of the elements that made the original watch good in the first place. It has a unique design language, it has a unique bracelet, uh, it is comfortable on wrist either way, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really look like a carbon copy of other stuff out there. It does have its own feel about it, and that's nice, and it's not completely easy to do, uh, and it's also great that they offer so many different colors. I mean, I don't think I've seen many yellow watches and they offer a yellow type watch here. So it's nice to see them just adding things that are kind of absent in the market. Last time I said this probably wasn't the best way to spend your money in, at this price point, but honestly, because of the upgrades that were taken, I would wholeheartedly recommend this watch. As long as you like the look of it, you're probably gonna like the watch itself. Uh, there's not much out there that I think directly competes with it. Again, you can go for something a little bit more unique with Visitor. You can go for something from maybe Notice. But I think Astor and Banks makes a pretty compelling package here. And if you think you'll like it, it'll probably impress you in person. So uh, thank you for watching. Hope you liked the review and I'll see you in another one.